Welcome to St. Mary MacKillop Parish, Oran Park, for our celebration of Mass. My name is Julie Straub, and from all of us here, we hope you're having a wonderful weekend, and thank you for joining us for Mass. We are a Catholic parish with six to form disciples, that's you and me, who joyfully follow Jesus Christ in every aspect of our lives. To be people who embrace, serve, nourish, and respond to the needs of our neighbours. It's never been easier to participate in Mass and connect with our parish community. From wherever you are, on whichever device you'd like. You can join us for Mass, live streamed on YouTube and available on demand. You can follow us through our social media Facebook and Twitter and keep updated with our e-newsletter, The Overview. Mass will begin shortly, but I invite you to take a moment now to share this video with someone while I spend a moment sharing some of our parish updates with you. Father David and our parish leadership team have decided that rather than a 3.30 p.m. Mass from next Sunday, 19th of July, we'll now celebrate a 9.30 a.m. Sunday Mass, open to the public at our Northern Mass Centre at Leppington. As every person who attends one of these 9.30 a.m. Sunday Masses, limited to 30 people per Mass, we will need to pre-register to fulfil COVID-19 protocols. To reserve a seat, all you need to do is go to the new parish Eventbrite link that can be found on our parish website, marymckillopparish.org.au. As COVID-19 restrictions change across our state and people's weekend programs and schedules now often vary from week to week, from this weekend, we have a new scheduling format for our weekend live stream masses called Mass On Demand. Rather than record and celebrate multiple live stream masses on the same weekend, one weekend mass will now be recorded live here from Studio Panola, the demountable at our Southern Mass Centre at Oran Park and made available for you to participate in and watch over the weekend and whatever time you and your household would like. The extension of our existing Southern Mass Centre at Oran Park has begun and would hopefully be finished by early to mid-September. While we know the pressures some households are facing at this time, it is the hope of Father David and our parish leadership team that those individuals and families who may be in a financial position to assist, will consider making a gift to support this project on top of their regular planned giving. Thank you to those households who have made an offering to this project. All offerings to support this fifth parish birthday project will be gratefully received and can be made through your parish giving donations tab on our parish website, or by contacting the parish office for other gifting methods. Digital Alfresco will be held this Sunday, the 12th of July, with a brand new format. So you are invited to gather with Father David and Erin, our coordinator of welcome and engagement, on our parish Facebook page at around 10 minutes past 11 a.m. Bring along your coffee, tea, or chosen drink and join in the conversation. Have you signed up to Formed? Our parish now has an annual parish subs subscription to Formed that is basically like Catholic Netflix, a streaming service that provides the very best Catholic contact, content from over 60 organisations. At the touch of your screen, you can watch, download movies, TV series, podcasts, e-books, intriguing Bible study and faith formation programs all for free. More information on how to sign up to Formed can be found on the homepage of our parish website. The giving of parishioners, especially those who would normally give through parish envelopes and the weekly offertory collections at Mass, has dropped significantly due to the closure of our Mass centres and as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. While we are thankful to those who are dropping off their planned giving envelopes to the parish office or who are giving online through direct debit or through internet banking, the shortfall in giving has put a strain on our parish finances, 
and our Parish Finance Council needs your help. If you are not currently giving automatically or online, we invite you to make a regular contribution to your parish community. All you need to do is go to the link in the YouTube description below or to the giving page on our diocesan website, dow.org.au forward slash planned giving. More information on this and all of our updates can be found in our latest edition of The Overview. But now it's time for Mass. To get the most out of Mass, to truly prepare yourself, we encourage you to sit, stand, kneel, sing. Do all the things you might normally do in a church building. You can find the words to all of our hymns in one of our recent Facebook posts. If you're new or it has been a while, just try to bring yourself to a place of stillness and be present to everything that's going on, knowing that we're all connected, wherever we are, whichever device we're participating on, through our one loving God, whose son promised that where two or three are gathered in his name, he would be in our midst. I invite you now, if you can, to please stand and join in our gathering song, One Bread, One Body. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Well, I too welcome you as we gather around the altar to celebrate this Mass together. We gather bringing our needs and intentions before Jesus. We join with our fellow parishioners who have asked us to light a candle for them in front of the image of our patron, St. Mary MacKillop. We also too join with our diocesan family in a spirit of celebration as we pray this weekend for Father Anthony Crook, who was ordained to the priesthood for our diocese this weekend. We pray for Father Anthony as he begins his priestly ministry among us. We also pray too for our brothers and sisters in the state of Victoria, people across our own region, across our own state and across the nation who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. And we pray for all those who are loving them, caring for them and ministering to them over these days. Brothers and sisters, as we gather around the altar, we recognize Jesus is among us as we call to mind our need of his abiding love and mercy.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, As the rain and the snow come down from the heavens, and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for eating. So the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying it out of my will and succeeding in whatever it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You care for the earth, give it water. You fill it with riches. Your river in heaven brims over to provide its grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. And thus you provide for the earth, you drench its furrows. You level it, soften it with showers, 
you bless its growth. The seed that falls on ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You crown the year with your goodness. Abundance flows in your steps. In the pastures of the wilderness, it flows. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The hills are girded with joy, the meadows covered with flocks. The valleys are decked with wheat. They shout for joy. Yes, they sing. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory, as yet unrevealed, which is waiting for us. The whole creation eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God. But creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation as we know has been groaning in one great act of giving birth. And not only creation, but all of us who possess the fruits, the first fruits of the spirit. We too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to welcome the gospel. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. The Lord be with you. And And with with your your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside. But such crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there. The people all stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables. He said, Imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock where they found little soil and sprang up straight away. But because there was no depth of earth, as soon as the sun came up they were scorched, and not having any roots they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, anyone who has ears. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as all of you who are grandparents and parents know firsthand, even though movie franchises will often, for marketing purposes, Describe some movies as children's movies, as kids' movies. There always seems to be a message hidden beneath the main storyline that's clearly been written with an adult audience in mind. 
This reality of a message hidden within a message is also true, I think, when it comes to the parables, like the parable of the sower and the seed, which we proclaim in this weekend's gospel. For while on face value, we can say, as many scripture scholars do, that in this parable, Jesus is the sower, the word of God is the seed, and you and I are the soil, I do think that we have to be careful in just solely interpreting this gospel parable in this one way. For while it is true, brothers and sisters, that Jesus continues to plant his word in the soil of our hearts, if you and I, especially over these days of the unfolding COVID-19 pandemic, if you and I are to be faithful to our vision as a parish, if you and I, as St. Teresa of Avila reminds us, are to be the hands and the feet of Christ, we too must be women and men who, like Jesus, scatter through our actions and words the seed of God's word, so that in the words of St. Benedict, whose feast we celebrate this weekend, others like us, will walk through life with the gospel as our guide. You know, as well as I do, that to scatter through action and word, the message of God's unfolding word and love for us in an environment where we believe the message is welcome, it's relatively easy. One might even say it's pain-free. But it is much more difficult, as we know, to scatter that seed in soil in places that are more resistant to receiving it. But like Jesus, the sower, who lavishly scatters the seed of God's word, you and I too must never be afraid to lavishly scatter to our actions and words the mercy, the compassion, and as Pope Francis so beautifully says, scatter the joy of the gospel, confident in the promise of the prophet Isaiah that we hear in today's first reading, that God's word will never return to God empty without carrying out God's will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. Now, when it does come to children's movies, in the film Cars 3 that was produced by Pixar and released by Disney, one of the characters in the movie is the grizzled 51 Ford named Smokey, who says, you can't turn back the clock, but you can wind it up again. Let's pray this weekend that we won't simply turn back to the interpretation we've always had of this weekend's parable, but that you and I will allow the deeper meaning and interpretation of this gospel parable to come alive in our lives and in our hearts. So much so that this week, no matter what we face, you and I will be courageous sowers of the seeds of God's word. A word that as you and I know, so desperately more than ever needs to hear it. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Listen, anyone who has ears. If you are able, I invite you now to stand and to join with me as we renew our profession of faith, as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends, let us pray to God in the name of Jesus, whom we serve in all those we pray for, all those in need. For the church, that we may spread the hopeful and exciting message of the gospel through both our words and deeds, so that others may encounter the God who loves them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who spread the word of God, for preachers and teachers, catechists and parents, and artists, that they may announce God's loving compassion faithfully and convincingly, so that others may come to know the living God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom from all that enslaves our hearts, that we may allow God's word to empower us, to deepen our reliance upon God, and to free us to live as God's children. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are seeking employment, that God will give them courage as they search and open their hearts to new possibilities and opportunities. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will free the human family from the coronavirus, guide all who are searching for treatments or a vaccine, and protect all who are vulnerable from the disease. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all healthcare workers, that God will give them strength as they care for the sick and protect them from illness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who have died recently and whose anniversaries occur at this time, that they may enter in, into God's eternal home. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. God, sower of the seed, make us good soil, ready to receive what you sow. And make us good sowers, that we may spread your love through our actions and words, so that all may experience the bounty of your kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We We lift lift them them up up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven, as we acclaim. praise father most holy for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love you formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone the creator he might have dominion over all creatures and when through disobedience he had lost your friendship you did not abandon him to the domain of death for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, He proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners freedom and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. He gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Brian, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those here present and your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Mary of the Cross, MacKillop, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. No matter what device we're using to participate in this Mass, we are united in the one Jesus, whose praise and worship we offer to the Father. So wherever we may be, at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the, the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Though we are unable to gather in such large numbers to celebrate the Mass, we are truly united together around this altar. So I invite you now in union with me to pray together our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Having listened to God's saving word, having participated in this Mass, having prayed together our prayer for spiritual communion, I invite you now to join with me in a moment of silent prayer as we pray in thanksgiving for the gift of Jesus who is among us.
let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effect upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads to pray for God's blessing. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in his sight. Pour out in abundance upon you the riches of his glory and teach you with the words of truth. May he instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.